This is Rogers TV. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Welcome to Her Story, The Journey to Winning a Seat at the Table. I'm your host, Mary Jane Murray, and this program is a series of conversations with inspirational women who are in leadership roles. And stories are a tapestry of lifelong events and experiences. So let's explore the journey. My guest today is Linda Van Els, and she is well known in our community because of her community engagement in so many organizations. But also, she was a previous host on Rogers TV, and so many of you have been welcoming her into your uh, living room every Wednesday morning. So Linda is a familiar face to a lot of people in our community, and I am so grateful that she has is going to be my guest today. I met Linda years ago through Blue Water Toastmasters when our paths briefly crossed. And that was just one of the few times that uh, Linda and I have crossed paths over the years. And um, so Linda has really been engaged in our community because she has such a passion for it. And it's been demonstrated over and over again with so many organizations over the years. And um, so Linda has also uh, taken on the role of counselor for the municipality of Meaford. And of course, the returning officer for the electoral district of Bruce Gray. And she was nominated uh, for the Chamber Special Merit Award a few years ago. So Linda has quite a journey to tell us about today. We are often um, very, we often see very accomplished women in leadership roles. However, we need to remember that leadership emerges at any stage and at any age. And Linda has been in many leadership roles over the years and has sat at many decision-making tables. And this is Linda's journey. Welcome, Linda, and thank you. Thank you, Mary Jane. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, once again, you're going to be a familiar face in so many so many people's homes, and I'm so, so pleased that you agreed to be my guest today. Um, let's let's start with those early years. That that journey. Something must have sparked in you at an early age to start your journey with such devoted community engagement. Please tell us about that. Well, gosh, Mary Jane, people who knew me grew, growing up are amazed that I have gone on to do all of these things because I was very shy. I grew up in um, Ceylon and in a, a single family home. My parents divorced when I was quite young and I'm the oldest of four. We're a very close family. And uh, we actually, my mother got a job in Own Sound and we moved to Own Sound two days before I started grade nine. So I went from the one room schoolhouse in Ceylon to the OSCVI. And boy, that was quite, quite a culture shock. Um, I was shy for a while, but then I finally realized that it really, you can't get anything done if you're too shy. You have to work yourself out of that. So I did. Um, I didn't. You know, I worked, did the normal things, and um, it wasn't until my daughter was in public school that I actually got involved with the Own Sound Bicycle Safety Committee. And there were a number of volunteers from um, that had children, and we worked with Constable Al Hay through the Own Sound Police Services, and we put on bike, bicycle rodeos every spring. And that was fun. I did that for a long time. I, I actually, my daughter, I think, was through, university, or through high school when I finally managed to get somebody to take my spot and uh, move on to other things. But, it, it, you know, I think you need 
I like to be involved. And I have always said, if you want to have a voice in your community, then you better get involved in your community. Was there a pivotal moment or something that really uh, spoke to you that kind of charted you into that path? Was there an event that really, uh, you started with the bicycle community, um, or bicycle services, but um, was there a pivotal moment that actually charted your path forward? I, I, I don't think it was any one moment, you know, I think um, I credit a, a lot of it to my mother. She was a very strong individual who raised, when my parents divorced, my sister was about three months old or when they separated. Um, she kept the four of us together. She put herself back through business college um, and we had a wonderful upbringing, but she was very strong and determined. And I think I got a lot of that from her. And you just, when you see something that needs to be done, then you might as well go and do it. Um, I was also, my friend Judy Porteous got me involved with uh, the CNIB. And at that time, we, were set, we set up an ad hoc committee to get a board in this area and to help people um, with vision. In, um, this, and I'm trying to remember, I know it was... Uh, Gray, Dufferin, I'm not sure if Bruce was involved in that or not, but it was quite a large area. And that was really, um, really quite worthwhile to work with people and see some of the obstacles that they have to overcome. Well, yes, and, and that was it, that is a very important organization to have in our community. And I know that our community has changed over the years, and we don't have a local CNIB. But I just want to reflect back a little bit here. You said that initially you were very shy, um, and that kind of surprised me, Linda, having having known you, because I I see you with a very strong voice. So at some point you felt that you uh, found your voice and that you were being heard. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly when that changed. I remember a few years ago we ran into um, a guy I went to high school with, and he said to my husband, he said, what, what did you do to her? Like, she's changed. And he said, I didn't do anything. She just, yeah, I think that, you know, a lot of us don't, reach our full potential that we're afraid to step out and do that extra little step. And I think also growing up, you know, Agnes McPhail's house was two doors down from mine. She didn't live there then, but she had before. And she's always been kind of a role model in my mind to think that somebody in that day and age could achieve what she achieved as a woman. It really, you know, the, the sky's the limit. We can do whatever we want. We can get there. Well, I I, I just want to um, mention that it sounds to me like you are standing on the shoulders of very strong women. I think so, and I think we all need to be. I mean, we're all there to support each other, and it doesn't matter what role you take in any organization. We all play a part in it. Some of us are a little more vocal than others, um, but we're all just as important and we can get the message across and do our bit for, as I said, for our community. Well, finding, uh, finding your voice and feeling that you're being heard, you have sat on many decision tables, around many decision-making tables. Did you feel that your voice was always being heard and that you were always able to uh, feel as, as if you were making an impact? I think so. I mean, once I'm pretty determined. So there's always more than one way to get your voice heard. So I've been on, I think one of the biggest boards I've ever been on was the Ontario Chamber of Commerce Board. And of course I had sat, I was the first female president in 125 years of the Own Sound and District Chamber of Commerce. So that was really quite something to, not that I felt any different once that happened, nothing earth shattering changed. It was just that you were going from one 
set to another set that finally women were taking their spot at that. But when I, I was then appointed to the Ontario Chamber of Commerce Board, at that time I worked for what is now Andrew Peller Limited, and John Peller, my boss, like the head of the company, was on that board as well. So it was really quite something that here I am, a lowly employee from Home Sound, sitting there with the the head of the company, and you know, it was it, it was really amazing, and you really can see at that point what a difference you can make. And being in that environment, was there any strategies that you used? Well, I think, and again, it's I'm a people person, and you really get, I think you can get to know people, and you can get a read on people, and what works when you're discussing something with one person does not always work with another person, and I think once you can understand how people work, you can... There are lots of ways to get your ideas across. I mean, sometimes if you're too um, abrupt with somebody, they're going to shut down right away. Other people, you need to be like that, or else they're not even going to listen to you. Um, did you did you feel that Toastmasters helped you with some of those strategies? For sure, I really enjoyed Toastmasters, and I. I can't remember I'd gotten involved with something else at the time and just didn't have the time to devote to Toastmasters so I left at that time but I I really enjoyed it and um, it just gives you so much confidence in speaking and being able to get up there and how to organize your thoughts I think that's a big thing is to be able to organize your thoughts before you get up to speak I, I know you probably feel the same way Mary Jane well, yes, one of the things that I learned from Toastmasters that I thought was re really valuable was how to put um, a point across in which you were uh, not really criticizing someone else, but you may be disagreeing with them. But at the same time, you were finding the best points that they were making, and then you were able to kind of, you know, talk about the things that you thought needed to be changed, and then go back to the the good points as well so that people were able to save face and that people were felt good about the fact that you brought up a criticism or a point to grow on or something like that and still made them feel as if they were doing a good job yes i think so i think it's and it's very important and i would hope you know if anybody wants to get involved in politics or any, practically any board, I mean, it is really a great, great place to go. I know my brother and sister-in-law went to Toastmasters before their daughter's wedding, so they feel comfortable standing up, talking, doing their speech. It can be used for so many things. Well, you probably use those skills a lot on Great County Life. Well, and I did, I started off actually in politically speaking. Um, I. For, oh, I forget who I replaced there, but somebody stepped down and uh, Mark asked me if I would like to do political speaking. I did that for a couple of years anyway. I'm not sure how long. That's the funny thing. When you're having fun, time flies. You lose track of it. Um, and then I went from political speaking to Gray County Life, and I loved that. It was so much fun. Oh, well, yes, I, I love Gray County Life, too, and I'm, I'm so pleased to be stepping into your shoes uh, to, to carry on with Gray County Life. But um, just reflecting back, when, when you became a counselor for uh, the Meaford of, uh, the municipality of Meaford, was that before politically speaking? Like, did politically speaking launch you into um, municipal politics? No, other way around. And I actually started off, it was um, in the late 1990s, maybe 98, I ran for Sydenham Council. Because again, there were, I, there were issues going on that I felt I had a voice I wanted to get out there. And I thought, again, if you want to make yourself heard, you can't be the person in the background complaining all the time. You had better get out there and get involved. So I ran for Sydenham Council, actually, sat on it, 
And then with the amalgamation, I was on Meaford Council, I think, for two different terms. And then it was, you know, I think a lot of people don't realize that when you're involved with um, government, council, regardless of whether it's a municipality like ours or something bigger, like provincial or federal, they don't realize the toll it takes on your family. And at that time in Meaford, there were a lot of contentious issues, which it didn't bother me dealing with them. However, it did my family. So at that time, I thought, okay, time maybe for me to step down and let, let someone else take over for a while. That's another thing that I think that some of us make the mistake of you can be involved in something for too long. There comes a time when you need to step down. I, I've always had the belief that if you are involved with something for too long, you take ownership of it. And then it's very hard for you to accept any constructive criticism or anything to do with it. So sometimes you need to just step back and let someone else fill those shoes. Well, I, I think that's a credit to your strength because people who are confident and secure within themselves realize that they're not the only voice in the room and that other people have skills and talents to take something forward. Um, one, of, one of the things I always feel that it's really important to surround yourself with really, um, really good thinking people who are not necessarily always agreeing with you, but you can have um, a good conversation about uh, different points of view and knowing your own strengths to say it's time to step back. So if, do you have any words of wisdom for anyone who is thinking about taking on a role in municipal politics? Oh gosh, I would tell them to go for it, to get themselves as educated as they can on any of the um, items that are coming up. It's kind of my pet peeve when I see people stepping into a role, and I hope I don't insult anybody, but to try to go for the top role, you really need to get that background work, like run for a counselor, get involved, and then work your way up. But by all means, Get involved. If there's an issue, for instance, school board, there's another one. We need lots of good people on the school board, especially with what they must be dealing with right now. Um, if that's your issue that you have, then get yourself educated about the, the issues and then put your name there and run for it. There are a lot of arm, armchair politicians out there. Oh, I, I think there's many armchair politicians out there. Yeah, just in some of the comments and feedback that we'll we'll see on social media. But um, one of the things that you mentioned that it takes a toll on your family. Um, what about your health and your mental health when you're having to deal with so many difficult issues? Well, that too. I mean, it, it's. There are times, you know, when you're sitting on council and you're making decisions, you're making decisions that affect people's lives, their livelihood, their incomes, their way of life, whatever. Those decisions are really impacting them. And at times, there's really, it's very difficult to deal with those. And some people are not always, I don't know what the right word is, but they get really upset about it which I can understand. Um, so it does take us, it's, it's very stressful. It's, it's interesting. I'm glad that you're breaking up that point. But when we first started talking about you being a counselor for the municipality of Meaford, your eyes lit up and you smiled. <laughs> I like politics. I really do. Um, I would have stayed on, but as I said, it just, it, it was a, really difficult term because there were a lot of issues that um, people were quite upset about. And as I said, I could deal with it. However, when it got to the point where there were people making nasty phone calls and emails to the point where you have to get the police involved because they're threatening and that's coming into your home and that's not, it's not good for the rest of your family. Mm. 
Wow. Um, one, of the, one because you sat on so many uh, boards over the years and so many decision-making tables, how do you feel that your leadership left a mark or an impact on the community? I don't really think about that. I hope I hope that it has. I hope that it encourages other people, both men and women, to get involved because I have done things that I never, ever would have dreamt that I'd be able to do. Um, for instance, sitting on the Own Sound Police Services Board at the time I was appointed there, and that was a provincial appointment. I didn't live in Own Sound. However, they said you, they had, they, approached me and said, you just need an interest in the city. Well, of course, I grew up in On Sound and I ran a business in On Sound. So I went ahead with it and um, actually had to go down to Queen's Park for an interview. And I would never have believed that I would have been sitting on the On Sound Police Services Board. And that was really a wonderful experience. And again, that's something else that a lot of people don't realize how much our police do, whether it's OPP or, or um, you know, a, a municipal force, because you don't see what goes on behind the scenes. And that was uh, the one a comment that came out was if your police force is doing a good job, you have no idea really of the other things that are going on behind the scenes. It's really interesting that you were approached it wasn't something you initiated. So someone saw something in you that said you would be a good person to be on the police services board. Apparently so. So I, I think sometimes that other people are a bit of a nudge that, that sets you in a direction. Oh, for sure. I think a lot of people out there need a nudge and, and may not realize that they have the qualities that a, a, a board or a, a different position might be looking for. And again, when you look at some of the really good boards that we've had in the area, and if you took the board members and saw what a, a wide um, experience the members have, how varied they are, you really need a lot of different ideas and experiences on a board to make it a really good board, I think. Well, I, I do have a quote here that I would like to read you, um, and I think you will recognize it, of course, because you said it. Um, every board you're involved in is a whole different experience because you're dealing with different people in different situations. So I, I think that that is a great summary of, of your experiences on so many, with so many different organizations, with all the, the different people are sitting around there, solving different problems. Well, exactly. That's right. Um, well, over the years, um, what what do you feel that you have learned about yourself through all these events and experiences? Oh, golly. Well, I as I said, I used to be shy. So I've learned that I'm not afraid to speak out anymore. Um, and some people may really be sorry about that. <laughs> However, um, and I think that... You know, when you, you stop and look at it, you realize that if you just push yourself a little bit, there's a lot of things that you can really accomplish, um, regardless of what it is. You, and if you feel strongly enough about something, then just give yourself that extra little push. And sometimes that's all you need. Sometimes you need to give yourself a little push or kick in the butt to get out there and just take a step forward. I mean, really, it's the same as public speaking and you'll remember this from Toastmasters I mean you get up you have your speech that you're going to make and once you realize that nobody out there knows what you're going to be saying so they don't know whether it's right or wrong because you're the one who wrote the speech um, and as long as you can get it out there that's all that matters well I think what it is 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 trying to uh, 
show that you have confidence in yourself. And even if the audience is not aware of what's in your speech, as long as you are confident in your delivery, then they will assume that it's that's the way it's supposed to be. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. So, um, in your in your life journey, is is there anything that you would like to convey to the audience in terms of uh, what would be a lesson that would help them in their journey? Well, I think. We all have a habit if we want to do something that we keep putting it off. And I would say, don't think that you don't have enough time to do it because you always find the time to do it. And if there's something that you really would like to achieve, then just go and do it now. Apply to that board, go out and volunteer. I mean, gosh, where would we be without volunteers? And for anyone who volunteers, they know that as you're volunteering, you get way more out of it probably than the people that you're volunteering for. Um, it just did such a feel good thing and we sure need more volunteers. So I would just say, give yourself that extra little push. Think a board, you know, you can sit on it or a committee. It doesn't take that much extra time. Just get out and get involved. Well, I like the message where you said, um, make sure that you uh, go for the uh, not the top level right away, that you actually start sort of at the bottom with maybe smaller boards and then work your way up if, as, as your confidence builds and as your knowledge builds and as you become more engaged in your community. That's right. I always remember the story that, um, as I said, I worked for what is now Andrew Peller Limited, and I was lucky enough to start with them when they were just Andre's Wines and much smaller than they are now. And John Peller and I got to be quite good friends, and he told me at the time he always knew he was going to take over for his dad in the company, but as the kids were growing up, their dad made them get out and work every summer for someone else. And then when they started in the company, they had to work in every department. So whether you drove a truck or you were in the bottling line or whatever, you worked your way up. I'm sure they made their way up a lot faster than most of us do. But still, it, it gives you such um, so much education as to how the rest of the process works. And that's the same for whether you're on a committee or if you want to run for council or for a higher position. You know, make sure you do your homework and get your information. Okay, thank you, Linda. We're at the one minute, oh, we're at the 30 second mark. I just want to ask you this one little question then that's all we have time for. Linda, what brings you joy? Oh, people, my family. I mean, I love people and I love my family. As I said, growing up, and we still are, we're a very close family. So that's really what brings me joy. Well, in this pandemic that we're going through, that is such a lovely comment to have your family around you and that they bring you joy. And I just want to mention, thank you very much, Linda, for being our guest today. I learned a lot from you and it's been such a pleasure. So join us next time on Her Story, The Journey to Winning a Seat at the Table for another inspirational story. the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. To understand the world. Okay, okay, we're here, we're here. Run. It's go time. Seek. So what happens if we bring the full light of modern science onto ancient curses?